Using forms natively in React can get easily complex once your form scales in size. Form libraries can abstract most of the complexity and provide you easy APIs to design your form components. Today, we are going to cover two most useful form libraries, Formic and React Hook Form. Let's get started. Formic is an extremely popular React form library and has a huge community. It is used by some of the top tech companies. They abstract lots of complexity and provide you easy APIs to build your forms. Their battery included pack offers you lot of features to create powerful forms. For this tutorial, I'll be building a job application form that needs validation and dynamic rendering. Let's get started. To use Formic, I'll have to import few components from my Formic package. The first component that I'll be importing is Formic. Formic follows render and children prop pattern. To work with Formic, I'll first create a new return statement. And inside my return statement, I'm going to return my Formic component. For my children, I'm going to pass a function. And this function will be returning my form component. I'll grab my native form component and I'll paste it over here. I'll get rid of the old return statement and give it a save. And let's head over to browser and check if this works. Now you can see this is working fine. To handle form submissions, we usually define an on submit attribute and we provide a handle submit handler. But instead of doing that, we can import a component from Formic called form. Your form component is going to abstract the on submit handler that you will have to define normally. I'll just replace my form component with my formix form component. Similarly for input, if you want to create a controlled input component, you will have to define value and on change handler. Instead of defining these handlers, I can import a component called field. This is going to abstract my usage of value and on change. So wherever I have input fields, I'm going to replace all those fields with my formic field. That's it. Now your field should be taking care of value and on change. For control components, you should be providing with certain initial values. I'll quickly grab my defined initial values and I'll paste it over here. To check values of my form, I can use an on submit prop on my form component. This is going to call a callback function which will provide me the values of my form. I'll just log my values and I'll check if this is working. I'll enter test data for my form and when I hit on submit, you can see I can get that data. Now let's see how we can add validations to my form. As of now, there are no validations. When I clear out my form fields and when I try to submit my form, this form will be submitted. Let's fix that. To add validations, just like your native components, if you want a required field, just add required on your field component. Now when you try to submit your form, this is going to trigger your inbuilt browser validation. Let's see how we can add custom validation. For example, whenever I type in admin as my first name, I should be showing a message to user saying he cannot use his first name. Let's see how we can add this. I'll head over to my formic component and to my formic component, I'll add a property called validate. This validate takes a callback function, which will return me values. This is the place where you would want to grab your values and perform your validation. I'll create a new error object and I'll check my first name. If that is equal to admin, I'm going to add a new property to my error, call it error of first name and assign it a custom message, something like you cannot use this and I'll return my error object to show error. I'll use another component called error message. Now just below my field component, I'll use this error message and I'll use name as my first name and I'll add another property called component and I'll just render it inside a span. I'll head over to my browser. When I type in admin, you can see my error message is getting rendered. Now let's see how we can dynamically render certain fields. 
In this section, I have two checkboxes, include social media links and include portfolio links. Whenever I select on include portfolio links, only then I'll have to render the field that is asking for the URL. Similarly for my social media links. To do this, I'll grab values from my children property. I'll head over to the section of my URLs. Over here, I'll check for my values of my portfolio. If this is checked, only then I'm going to render my URL field. Similarly, for my social media, I'll check for the values of include social. Only when this checkbox is checked, I'll be rendering my social media URL. Let's check it. When I check on portfolio links, only then I'll get those URLs. Similarly, for my social links. This is how you can dynamically render fields using Formic. You can look at the amount of code that we wrote in order to render this huge form. Now, if you compare it with my previous tutorials where I showed you how you can create forms using control components, you can see how much complexity we have reduced using Formic. This is how Formic can help you in reducing or in managing your forms. But your Formic component still suffers from render issues because at the end of the day, Formic still works on top of your control components. So whenever user changes anything, any input, your component will be rendered. To check this, let's log a render statement and let's see how many times my component renders. Now you can see for every keystroke, my component renders. This is one of the issues that we usually have with control components. When you're dealing with bigger forms, using control components can cause performance issues. This is where you see patterns where people adopting to uncontrolled components. Let's see a library which outperforms Formic and also provide you with those APIs that can abstract complexities in building forms. React hook form is an amazing form library that relies on hooks. This works with uncontrolled components and that's one of the reasons why you have a huge performance benefit when compared to other libraries. In this section, you can check the code differences between three most popular form libraries. And you can see with React hook form, you end up writing native code and lesser code. For components that need dynamic properties, you can isolate renders within that component. Unlike with your control forms, when an element in your form renders, your whole component renders. React hook form uses uncontrolled components. You don't render for every keystroke. This can cause a huge performance benefit. Also, it is extremely small when compared to other form libraries. Let's see how we can work with React hook form. To get started with React hook form, first I'll import few methods from my React hook form. To grab data from your uncontrolled component, one of the pattern is to define ref on each of your component. Handling refs for all your fields can be tiresome. Instead, I'll use a method register from my use form. And for my ref, I'm going to use this register. Just like my first element, I'll add this for rest of my input elements. Now all my elements are registered with this hook form. To get values from your form, you need to have an on submit handler. To handle that, I'll grab handle submit from my use form. Inside my on submit attribute of my form, I'll use handle submit and I'll call my on submit. This is going to call my function with values and I'll lock this values. Let's head over to browser and let's check if this works. I'll enter test data and when I submit my form, I can get that data. Let's see how we can add custom validation. Whenever I type in admin as my first name, I'll have to render a message saying cannot use this first name. In order to watch for my first name, I'll grab watch from my use form. I'll define a watch values and I'll assign it watch. Your watch method takes an array of all your fields that you want to watch dynamically. I'm going to provide first name in my array. Just below my input, I'm going to use watch values. I'm going to check if my first name of my watch values equals admin. If it does, then I'll render out a message saying you cannot use this.
If it doesn't, then I'll just ignore this message. Let's see if this works. I'll head over to my browser. When I type in admin, you can see I get that message. In this social media links, I'll have to render my URL fields dynamically. Let's see how we can do that. In order to watch these values, I'll have to include them in my array. So I'll add include portfolio and include social to my array. I'll head over to the URL section. I will check for my watch values. I will check if watch values of my include portfolio. If this is checked, only then I'm going to render my URL component. Similarly, for my social media component. I'll check for my watch values and I'll check if my include social checkbox is checked. Only then I'm going to render out the social URL component. I'll head over to browser. When I check this portfolio, you can see the URL similarly for social media. This is how you can dynamically render components using React hook form. Now you can see how clean my code looks. I can still rely on my native input elements and I can get the properties of dynamic rendering and custom validations. Also, creating forms using hook forms is extremely powerful. Let's see how many times my component renders. I'll add a render statement inside my form. Whenever I type in first name, I render for every keystroke. But for the remaining elements, whenever I change that data, my component doesn't render. My component renders only for the data that I am watching. Unlike your control components where your component renders for every keystroke, no matter what field you are using, with React hook form, you only render for the component that you are watching. This can be a huge performance benefit when you are working with an extremely large forms. React hook form is far by the easiest library to work with and also extremely powerful when compared to other famous form libraries. Because you are still relying on uncontrolled components, you end up writing native code which is manageable. That's it for today's video. In the next section, we will be using React hook form to create a reusable and powerful form component. Stay tuned for that and thanks for watching.